January of 2016, I was perfectly healthy. I returned from a family holiday to Port Douglas and I was struck down with some sort of virus, um, which made me really sick. It then attacked my vocal cords and I lost the ability to speak for eight months. It drove me insane. On the 9th of November 2016, my life was turned upside down. I was at the dentist just having a normal checkup um, when my body shut down. Um, I basically walked into the dentist and I was taken out by ambulance completely unconscious. It's been nearly two years since I've been able to walk. I then spent six and a half weeks in hospital. Since then, I regained the use of my arms, but anything from the waist down, I still can't wiggle my toes or move my legs or walk. I've also ditched the neck brace, <laughs> which is fantastic, because it means I can wear necklaces and stuff again. But I will walk. struggle to understand how I can be in a wheelchair and the fact is that I, I just do it, um, I make it happen. Um, at the end of the day the wheelchair is only my mode of transport, it's acting as my legs while mine don't work. One day I'll be able to ditch it and wave it goodbye <laughs> but for now it's purely my mode of transport, it's given me a new lease on life essentially um, while my own legs don't work. So. It's made me appreciate everything so much more. I really dislike when people dance around the topic. I'd rather them be explicit and upfront with me, you know, what happened or is there anything I can do, rather than just sort of ignore it and push it to the side. A wheelchair is not invisible but a lot of the other stuff that's going on is invisible. So on my harder days where I was feeling like absolute rubbish, for someone to say, oh, you know, you look fantastic, you must be getting better. I found it really hard. I've been lucky with the best group of friends anyone could imagine who've been by my side right from the start, who've, you know, fed me in hospital when I was completely paralysed, literally everything. My best friend, Hannah, came in early in the morning just so that she could hold my hand through a medical procedure. When Brittany got sick, um, I think it kind of made us closer. I saw her at her worst. I spoke for her in class and at the hospital. I think she's had to become a lot stronger and she's had to cope with how people look at her, how people treat her and it takes a toll. I mean, I see it and it's, it's not always very nice and I think it takes a very strong person to see it and to just keep going and to not worry about it too much anyway. I don't think I would have gotten through it without her. You were there every minute of every day <laughs> and I thought you would have been sick of me by the end of it. You've seen me at my rock bottom and the only way is up. <laughs> Since I've been a little girl, I've always dreamt of getting into medicine and because of my experience, that's just made me even more determined. Number one goal is to be up and walking. Um, I want to be able to get on a plane and surprise my nana and just walk along the beach with her collecting shells. 
on the photography side of things, um, I've actually developed my photography as a business this year. I just love it so much. I want to share um, my passion with others and capture beautiful photos for people. For me, it's capturing the beauty in the small things. Photos, physical photos, are always something that you can look back on. One day, I'm going to look back on those photos and I'm going to see how far I've come. Even now, from being in a hospital bed to sitting here today and pursuing my photography despite being in a wheelchair, my photography is something that I will definitely pursue. If Brittany can get through something like this, then I don't think there's much she can't do. If I've gained anything from this experience, the people it's brought into my life and the life lessons I've been taught have made it all worth it. I will walk again. Thank you.